Deputy Castles, uh, Deputy Castles is substituting for Deputy Casey. Um, thanks, Chairperson. I was, <clears throat> I was good to be in this committee. I was good to be discussing. Yeah. I was good to be discussing local government. Uh, and I think the points actually made before by Deputy Howland in respect of maybe local government because of the seriousness of housing being, you know, relegated in, in terms of discussion is, is, is one well made. So I welcome the debate here this morning. I welcome all of the, uh, the witnesses. Uh, I'd be well used to listening to Councillor P.O. Smith on my own local radio station, LMFM, along with Deputy O'Dowd. So, and indeed a lot of the issues that he spoke about as well in, in, in the context of uh, the councillors being outvoted in terms of the parking charges or the draw reporting would be very well aware. So I'd like to welcome everybody. And just like Deputy Howland, um, I was proud to have been mayor of, of my town. I'm coming up now in this summer, 20 years since I was first elected uh, in the 1999 elections to Navan Town Council. So um, I believe passionately uh, about this process, about your proposals, about the proposals uh, that I have, I have formally brought as well. Uh, because it is our party position as formally moved by our town council uh, bill in 2017 uh, and the progress of that bill uh, was frustratingly uh, slow after second stage uh, and it was eventually killed by the cabinet last week. So it will be interesting to see the, the reaction equally to, to, to your proposals um, because um, I do believe in the, in the rebalancing of, of of democracy, uh, as outlined by Dr. Quinn Levin. Uh, I find it particularly troublesome, Chairperson, in the way in which uh, the government, in killing the bill, uh, and in particular Minister Feeling, uh, his attempts to frame this debate uh, because his stating that he believes that by giving a citizen two votes, one for a town council and one for a county, it's some way undemocratic. Now, I think. Nothing is more uh, undemocratic than what happened in the killing of the councils in the first place, but I don't believe that's undemocratic. And the attempt to frame my proposals, or indeed that of Deputy Howland's, as undemocratic, I think is wrong. Uh, it's flawed. It misses the point that urban spaces, large towns, are unique spaces. Um, they require special management, they require special budgets, they require special development plans, as Councillor Smith has outlined. Um, the over-centralisation, as Dr Quinlivan has said, is just inexcusable uh, when you see the table uh, that you have produced and, and, and we coming effectively bottom of that table ac across Europe. Uh, and also, uh, that what Deputy Howland has said, that the, uh, we have diluted the focus on our towns uh, by virtue of, of what has happened, and they have been left poorer places as a result of this shift from their statutory basis to the flawed municipal district model. Um, uh, Marie, you mentioned the, the launch yesterday of, of the three unions forced to sip to and connect. I was there myself, uh, and it's a welcome debate instigated. Uh, their campaign is called More Power to You. Uh, it has a five point plan. Uh, number one about that is democracy and the call for the reinstation of the, of the town council's uh, system. Uh, we also discussed, you know, Councillor Dermot Lacey was there, the issue of, of the funding powers. Now, your, uh, your uh, contribution here was very focused on, on Killarney and, and, and uh, the race based there. I have a very good friend on Killarney Municipal District, uh, Councillor Niall Kelleher, who is also Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce down there. Uh, and it's um, interesting that Dr Quinlevin mentioned the rates taking Killarney uh, and the efficiency because Councillor Kelleher was telling me that um, set out now in the, in, in the town. So you, you would have around 10.9 million euro of rates in the Killarney Municipal District, but 7.3 million of that is coming from the very small centre of the town. And what is, he has said to me since the abolition of Killarney Town Council is that and there has to be a redistribution of the money raised in the town, and that is infuriating the business community because they are raising the lion's share of the rate space, uh, and it's not being reinvested now, uh, as had been the case in the town core. And that's a fundamental issue, I think, that both myself and Deputy Howland would agree on in terms of that. So could I ask your view, Deputy Howland, uh, on that very issue, uh, the retention of the rate space, uh, and also uh, in terms of, because you touched on it, the examination of the boundary, because that, is, that has been a key bugbear for decades and decades, because directors of finance and county managers, uh, I know we went through a boundary extension in, in Navan uh, back uh, when Minister Gormley was, was there, uh, and 
when the proposals came out from the Customs House, uh, what was interesting was there was a loop put around Tara Mines to make sure Tara Mines, which would have a huge rates base, was kept outside the potential. So can I ask your opinion in terms of, um, because you said this would be a different model, um, that the town boundaries, in terms of from an administrative point of view, from a, from a finance point of view, would be reflective of the true town and that you wouldn't have a situation where you'd be divvying up uh, boundaries uh, to ensure that the kind of lucrative rates would be retained by the county uh, and, and not the town. If I could just start with that question first, please. Can, can, will I ask all my questions now, Chairperson? Ask them all now and I'll okay, that's fine. Okay, well, that's, that'll be the first one then. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, uh, the statutory planning powers, I presume that you would be looking to seek to retain or to reinstate the, uh, the uh, development plan process on a statutory basis within the, the town council system as well. Can I also ask you in terms of the directly elected mayors, because Councillor Smith uh, mentioned the role of the mayor in respect of the Drogheda Port Company, uh, and I suppose we have the... Um, potentially anyway, if, 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 the, if the government has any information, uh, the, the pilot plebiscite for Cork uh, and Limerick and Waterford for the city basis. Have you thought about in terms of the actual impact of, of the potent, because Councillor Smith touched on the role of the mayor, uh, at a kind of large town council basis for the likes of, of Drogheda or Navan or, or Wexford uh, and the role within that as well, because I think that is an important uh, point in the rebalancing of powers. Uh, and can I also ask maybe Dr Quinlan from that uh, question as well on that role of a directly elected mayor in a town council system because I know from engagements I would have with town twinning processes across Europe and Italy where we would have numerous uh, and the, the role of the mayor and the power of the mayor is quite distinctive in terms of the composition of effectively like a mini cabinet as well uh, in, his, in his local town authority um, so um, if I could just ask those uh, questions and can I also just ask Deputy Howland in terms of the threshold for the 5,000 um, I know my particular proposal is set a slightly higher uh, threshold it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue of debate within all political parties because ultimately deputies and so forth will be looking for their towns at the threshold to be set so that they come in my own personal belief is we should be going first of all for the, for the larger towns to, to give them the sense of autonomy in terms of budgetary and planning powers that they can achieve substantial things. Uh, the, the likes of, 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 of Drogheda, Navan, Wexford, Kil, um, Killarney. Uh, but can I ask then, do you believe that if, if Drogheda gets it, RD should get it? If Navan gets it, Kells should get it? If, if Wexford gets it, New Ross should get it? You know, I mean, and. I suppose it's an arbitrary figure, 5,000, but in, in terms of, of the beliefs that you held to come to that figure uh, in, in the first instance and the, the explanation behind that. So that's all. Thank you.